Finnovate showcases cutting-edge banking and financial technology through a global conference series featuring short-form demos and thought leadership. Now, the conversation continues on the Finnovate podcast. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Finnovate podcast. Joining me today, we have Brian Koss of CUNA Mutual and CMFG Ventures. Brian, thanks so much for taking the time. Great to be here, Greg. So to kick things off, could you give us a quick background on yourself and the two organizations that you're working with? Yeah, happy to do so. So I have two functions uh, that I wear at at CUNA Mutual. Um, I lead our venture capital arm, which is CMFG Ventures. And I also head up our corporate development team. So uh, the team that handles all of the acquisitions that we pursue. Um, Probably start with just a little bit of background on CUNY Mutual is the driver of our investment focus through our venture capital arm. So CUNY Mutual is a large insurance company that um, is deeply rooted in the credit union system. And we provide a broad range of financial um, services and and other solutions to credit unions and their members. Uh, So we partner with about 95% of all the credit unions in the U.S., uh, also provide services to about 1,500 banks. So we have over about 6,400 financial institutions that we work with. Uh, with the CMFG Ventures, then, we really launched our, our venture arm back in 2016 to focus on fintech companies that could help address the needs of credit unions and to really leverage that, that um, very large network that we have um, to kind of bring fintechs and credit unions together. Um, since that launch, we've uh, invested in 55 fintech companies, uh, have deployed over 300 million of capital, and I think most proudly, we've helped facilitate over a thousand fintech partnerships um, with credit unions, and have really evolved to create, um, you know, basically an ecosystem to bring credit unions and fintechs together. So we have a, a fintech forum, which is a platform. Uh, that allows credit unions and fintechs to engage with one another. We have over 2,400 members on that. And we uh, have a fintech summit, which is another event to bring credit unions and fintechs together. And um, you know, we've now created a, a standalone business unit within CUNY Mutual that does nothing but distribute uh, fintech solutions to banks and credit unions. Yeah, it's really interesting because I think a lot of the people, the demoing companies, I should say, who come across the Finnovate stage are now really starting to look at the credit union community as a place where they can have some success. We've seen some of the companies who uh, have have gone on from our show um, have a lot of success with credit unions, and I think it's a really interesting avenue for them to explore. So let's let's start this at the really high level. Can you talk just a little bit about how credit union fintech needs are different from the needs of other financial institutions? Yeah, so I think in terms of if you look at the financial services industry as, as really large banks, fintechs, and then probably all others, uh, meaning credit unions and community banks, probably the differences um, between credit unions and community banks are um, actually not, not that significant. I think there are more similarities than differences. And, and really the challenge for those um, smaller financial institutions is how are they going to remain relevant? and competitive with the hundreds of billions of dollars that are being spent by big banks and fintechs um, around banking technology. And um, so, you know, that's really uh, an area of growing need. And I think for credit unions to remain competitive and relevant, um, you know, they really need to turn to fintech partnerships to deliver the digital experiences that consumers really expect. So again, I, I see tremendous opportunities for you know, really the banks uh, and credit unions um, to collaborate with these fintech partnerships where it creates a you know, win-win environment. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to follow up on the word partnerships because I think that's one that can mean a lot of different things to different people. When you have seen successful partnerships between fintechs and the credit unions, uh, what do those look like? What shape do those partnerships take? Yeah, they certainly go beyond just maybe a, a typical vendor relationship. Um, you know, these are uh, oftentimes relationships where you have the C-suite of a credit union regularly engaging with the founder uh, or CEO of a fintech company, and um, they meet on a regular basis and really 
uh, the credit union has you know, really kind of built this partnership into one of the pillars of, of its growth. And those are the ones where we've seen the greatest success and that have really been transformative for both the credit union and the fintech. Yeah, that, that definitely lines up with what I'm seeing as well. I think one of the things that makes a really successful partnership in this space in particular is that in many cases, a lot of fintech companies who start a, you know, they create a new innovation because they see a hole somewhere, they're kind of driven by a sense of values that there's something that should be happening in the market that's not happening. Whether it's a group of people who are on the sidelines who aren't able to, you know, get access to credit or whether it's there's a pain point somewhere. And there are certainly a lot of credit unions who have that same kind of driving factor, that value driven, we want to serve our members, we want to serve our community. Um, and I think that's really where those partnerships can become excellent is when you can align those values and have two different sides of the equation working towards the same goal. That's where we've certainly seen some impressive things taking place as well. Yeah, it's great to talk to both founders and credit union executives, and they talk about their their you know being mission driven and and you know focus on financial inclusion, serving underrepresented um, segments, and and they almost sound like one and the same. And I, I tell you know credit union leaders that so you should you should talk to some of the passion uh, or talk to some of the uh founders um and the passion that they have it's it's so closely aligned and those are the best relationships yeah yeah no question um so you know i think one of the things we kind of talked about there are some really forward thinking credit unions who are embracing technology to really good effect but i think there's also clearly some who are still dragging their feet there's some credit unions who are maybe hesitant to get in the game or maybe don't know exactly how to to take that first step what do you think it would take to get everybody in the CU ecosystem really fired up about fintech and willing to embrace it more wholeheartedly? Yeah, I think you know a couple of things that would really help accelerate um, sort of this ecosystem. You know, one I think is just you know uh, creating a safe space for credit unions to collaborate with fintechs from a regulatory standpoint. And I would say a lot of the regulators in the credit union industry have been actually quite supportive of um, enabling these types of partnerships because I think they realize that these partnerships are really key to the long-term strength um, and stability of the credit union space. Um, I think a lot of credit union boards have held back their um, executive teams from pursuing these partnerships. Uh, credit union boards tend to be volunteer uh, boards, um, oftentimes comprised of uh, retired credit union executives. And, and I don't know that they always appreciate how quickly the world is changing, uh, how uh, complicated the technology has become. So I think they hold them back. Um, I think what would really get people excited and what we're starting to see is that there are some really big success stories that are emerging um, in terms of just how significant and, and game-changing a fintech partnership can be. And I think that is starting to get more, more credit unions fired up. I think there's also just safety in numbers. So as more and more credit unions uh, pursue partnerships. Um, there's just, uh, I, I think, more comfort um, with credit union leaders to to go in and pursue these opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. There's also kind of the there's safety in numbers. There's maybe danger in being alone. If you're the last one to uh, adopt new technologies, obviously that's not going to to end well. Um, this also seems like a good point just to mention that if Innovate Spring coming up, we do have some content specifically for credit unions and community banks to help that community talk about what types of fintech um, is really going to be helpful, which we're obviously looking at trying to bring more of those communities into our events as well. So, um, But now let's switch gears a little bit because we've been talking about things kind of from the credit union side, which is really interesting. Let's talk about now uh, from the VC side of things. Um, obviously, capital availability has changed dramatically over the last 12 months. How are things looking for you at CMFG? You know, have you guys had to shift your strategy at all? You know, I think when you look at sort of the the North Star, which really drives our strategy, it, it, it you know hasn't changed, and that is, you know, we continue to um, seek technology that can address the the needs of banks and credit unions, and sort of the the needs from a technology standpoint have not diminished um, uh, over the last you know twelve months, um, and so 
we see tremendous opportunity to you know, really continue to deploy capital in companies um, so that we can execute on sort of that strategic objective that that's part of our mandate. Um, so I think, you know, we believe the current environment actually creates some great investment opportunities. Uh, you know, certainly looking at four companies in our portfolio, you know, helping them kind of weather this challenging environment, providing them with capital. And I think, you know, as importantly is let's focus on opportunities where we can drive revenue and growth into these companies, leveraging that very large network that I mentioned uh, at the beginning in terms of, um, you know, providing access to, into the credit union space. Yeah, yeah. What do you think uh, the next couple of months, maybe let's say 12 to 18 months will hold in the venture capital community? I mean, obviously, to your point, there are opportunities there. There's a technological need there on the part of the end customers here. Um, how do you think the funding uh, ecosystem will shift to support that? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing, certainly deals are taking a lot longer to get done. Um, you know, VCs are are applying much greater scrutiny. They're doing deeper uh, due diligence. So I don't expect that to change. Uh, you know, we're not going to go back to how things were maybe uh, in 2021 where uh, deals would, would come together in a matter of weeks. Um, so, it, you know, I, I certainly also think there will probably be some level of consolidation among fintech companies. And, you know, I think we also expect to see um, some increase in merger and acquisitions. Um, and we see that from that standpoint as an opportunity. We're, we're really kind of building out our own uh, ecosystem of, of uh, fintech solutions within CUNY Mutual. And you know we're always looking at how we can add new capabilities and solutions, uh, and then integrate some of our portfolio companies into you know really kind of building seamless end-to-end -end technology that we can deliver into the credit union space uh, on a turnkey basis. So, again, I I'm actually pretty uh, you know excited. I think you know bullish on the opportunity, and I think you know valuations will will kind of normalize. Um, but again, the underlying need hasn't diminished, which is, I think, really critical. Yeah, yeah, I agree. The need is still there. If anything, it's continuing to grow. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm also really curious about, I've heard from a couple of other investors that there may be a shift away, not away from entirely, but just more of an emphasis placed on early stage investments, more seed stage, more series A, as opposed to some of the really mammoth, you know, series B and series C rounds that we saw a couple of years ago. Um, how do you see the difference between kind of those early stage rounds and those later stage rounds continuing to unfold? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we are seeing certainly less volatility from a valuation standpoint in those earlier stage companies. Um, and so, you know, we have two funds. Uh, one fund focuses just on investing in seed and pre-seed companies led by uh, founders that have been underrepresented in venture capital. So these companies are all fintech companies uh, led by women founders, founders of color and, and other underrepresented groups. So there's tremendous companies, um, great vision, really aligned with our strategic objectives. And um, so I, I think those companies will have a much easier time raising capital than, as you point out, some of the the late stage companies where, where that becomes more challenging and there's just more valuation pressure. Yeah, that pressure is very real and it's relentless. Um, and know a number of our innovators have kind of struggled with that at times. So um, I think we have time for one more question here. And I'd like to just come back up to this really high level again. What would you say to fintech innovators to convince them that they should be pointing their technology at credit unions specifically? I think this is an area a lot of fintech companies struggle. Where you know who needs my tools? Who needs the products that I'm building? Um, so, how big is the opportunity for those new fintech innovators in the credit union space? I think the opportunities are are immense. Um, there are over 130 million credit union members in the U.S. market alone. Um, so it's a huge segment of the U.S. population uh, that works with credit unions. Um, second, it's a very collaborative industry. It, it's very unusual where you uh, you know walk into industry events and uh, you have you know credit unions sharing best practices with one another. You know uh, 
you don't see that kind of collaboration in other industries where your your competitors come together uh, and collaborate to to solve solutions. And and again, fintechs uh, really can can leverage that sort of um, uh, you know the, that collaborative nature of the industry. And then I'd say the only thing is, uh, and and I hear this a lot from fintech companies, is that it can be very uh, it can be a very difficult industry. For outsiders to break into, um, hmm. uh, it's I wouldn't say it's a closed ecosystem, but you know this is certainly where you know fintechs that we work with and invest in are able to really leverage the the vast network that we've built and in sort of the eighty five year relationship and, and trust that's been built over the years with credit unions. Um, so we certainly use. Uh, those relationships to open a lot of doors for these fintech companies yeah no certainly the size of the potential prize is there but i think you know there there is an element of gatekeeping that you have to be willing to get through just like in any aspect of fintech really i think the same is true for you know virtually all financial institutions that you need to be able to develop that relationship in order to have success but certainly there's a lot to do it's a, a space where there's a lot of help needed and it's great to see the fintech ecosystem turning its attention now more towards the credit union space i think that's something that will continue i think it's something that we uh will do our best at finnovate to encourage it sounds like obviously both of your organizations that you work with will be doing the same um, i really appreciate you taking the time today this is a really interesting conversation and hopefully we've inspired a couple of innovators to look at the credit union space more closely yeah thanks so much greg uh yeah really appreciate the time and and definitely encourage uh fintech companies to to consider credit unions as uh, a really uh, potentially huge opportunity the finnovate podcast is produced by informa connect in association with provoke.fm media Check out Finnovate.com for information on Finnovate's upcoming shows and to learn how you can get involved. The discount code Finnovate Podcast will save you 20% on tickets to all of our events. And you can email us at info at for information on sponsoring, speaking, or demoing. Thanks for listening. <laughs>